Hi everybody, this is Lauren McLeod from Mermaid Trash and I was getting ready today to package up a special commission piece for a client. And I thought I would let you join in with me so that you could see how I do that. With these, I would call this a bigger piece. This is 12 by 24 inches on cradle birch wood. Anything that's really this size or kind of bigger, I consider a larger piece. And with the smaller pieces, it's really easy to get those packaged up and ready and into a nice tight box and out into the world. But with these bigger pieces, I tend to find that I need to use a lot of my recycled materials. And it's because I work with so many different size woods and canvas and panels, it would just be impossible for me to have every size box on hand to put these in. So I save everything that I can incoming. You know, I order a lot of stuff online. I'm sure a lot of you are ordering a lot of art supplies and stuff online. So save your boxes and save all the packing material because that's what I do to get a lot of these, you know, different shape pieces out into the world. I use boxes that I have incoming and I save. It saves a lot on my budget. It, it, you know, cuts down on the environmental impact of having to buy and, you know, get all of these things, um, especially the, the plastic stuff, like the bubbles and, and things like that. I don't really want to buy, if that makes sense. And um, so whatever I get, I reuse. And that it's been a great way for me to get my packages out into the world. So let's get to it. Let me come in, bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give it a good wipe down because there is nothing like your client getting your beautiful artwork in the mail and they pull it out and they start turning it in the light and it's covered in your fingerprints. So. I use just a little bit of Windex. I don't spray it directly on it. I spray it on this paper towel and I give it a nice good wipe down to make sure that there are no fingerprints, no swirls, and that it is perfect. All right, that looks pretty darn good. So I'm gonna start with a bit of butcher's paper. And I get these on really super long rolls, about 500 feet long. And I prefer this to be the first layer that I put on the piece because it's flat. And I've come to find that this is also the best way to store my resin pieces is wrapped in butcher's paper. Um, because any type of bubble wrap or anything with texture is going to mar uh, the surface of the resin. So before it gets wrapped in anything or any bubble wrap or tissue paper or anything like that, it gets wrapped up fairly well in this butcher's paper. So I'm just literally going to turn it and get it wrapped on there. By the time I'm done, it should cover it about five or six times, giving it a really nice cushion. This paper is super thick and it creates a really nice cushion. And I'm just gonna take this down right here. All right, so the next thing is going to be another layer of butcher's paper. This is the top, and since I don't really do bubble wrap, I don't really buy bubble wrap, I get a lot of these mailers, though, like stuff like that, that has bubble in on. These are paper mailers that have, you know, it's double-sided bubble wrap. So instead of buying, like, rolls of bubble wrap, 
and I get these anyway, and when I buy more of them, it's, you know, a bulk discount. I just get more of these and I use them as buffers um, on the top layer of resin. So let me go grab another sheet of butcher's paper. It's gonna go just like that and I make sure that these guys come over. Oh, this one needs to be flipped around. See these tabs here? These ones have like the sticky tabs. So I'm gonna separate these out just enough so that I know they'll go over the ends. And then I'm gonna do the ends by tucking this and sticking it. And that'll protect the corners of it and the ends of it fairly well without having to do any additional wrapping horizontally, or I should say vertically along it. Where's my tape? Here we go. And a little tape here. Hold it in place while you turn it. Okay. piece of tape here. And then when you flip it over, these tabs should be exposed. My scarf keeps getting in the way. So I'm just going to peel those and fold it right over the side. Same thing on this side. A little plastic off. And fold it over as tight as you can. All right, so that is ready to go in the box. And for all intents and purposes, that's pretty, that's a pretty clean pack. So now when it goes into the box, I'm going to use some more package material. I like to pick boxes that are pretty tight. Um, this one's really wide for it, um, but not like extremely wide. So I'm going to uh, use some of my recycled packing material as well as some tissue paper to fill in the bottom of the box and make sure that it's all nice and snug, ready for my painting so that it doesn't move around too much. So this is a box that I was using as a dust cover. So it's got like splotches of my handprints and other little things on it. Um, but that's okay, because I like to use this blue tape uh, that I buy in bulk, it's packing tape, it's just blue colored. And uh, what I end up doing is just basically wrapping the whole thing up anyway. And it gives it a much cleaner look and you don't see all the, the mess of, uh, you know, old labels or if you're using it as a dust cover or whatever's wrong with the box, you can cover it up with the blue tape. So I'm gonna start by taking some of these packing bubbles that I had on hand and I'm gonna put those on the bottom of the box here. Shut those down there. And uh, 
I like using tissue paper as a buffer. It really is insulating and it does a great job. And next, I'm going to attempt to slide the piece on in. Oh, it's perfect. All right, boom. And that's in there and there's a maybe like an inch gap here. And I'm gonna stuff the crap out of that with tissue paper after I add in all of my artist information and swag. I also do a certificate of authenticate, oh my God, of authenticity. Say that five times fast. Certificate of authenticity. Certificate, I can't. Can't, can't do it. And that's all gonna go into the box. And then I'm basically gonna wrap the ever living crap out of it with um, blue tape. So let me get all that stuff in there and um, I'm gonna end cap it just like I did that side. It'll get some packing bubbles and some tissue paper. And uh, uh, let me do that and I'll come back. was tape along the edges here and then around each side. And that's it. As you can see, most of the blemishes from me pouring on it and using it as a dust cover are gone. So it's ready to be labeled and go out into the world. So I hope you enjoyed my video and learned a little bit of something on how to package your own resin pieces. Just know that this is a one of many different, 101 different ways that you can package up your resin piece. And my final thought to you would be, as you get used to shipping bigger pieces, just know the bigger they are, the heavy, heavier they are, you're going to want to get them in a nice snug box and not have them move around. You shouldn't hear any movement and they should be nice and snug. This prevents them from getting dented and having issues with the box and other things like that. So enjoy and come subscribe for more tips and tricks on your resin world and come and join me on www.mermaidtrash.com and come subscribe for all the latest updates as well as exclusive coupons for my members. Take care wherever you are in the world and happy pouring.